take back that creativity, the thing that's been dormant. I want you to say that boundaries come off tonight. Amen. I thank you guys for joining in. Arise, shine, for this is your time. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad. And why? Because we got breath. You got breath, you got life. You got life. That means you still got an opportunity to complete your assignments. Blessings, I'm J.L. Gibbons. Welcome to completing your assignments. Listen, God wants to do something amazing through you. There's a assignment, there's a purpose, there's a calling that God has upon your life. And you have to obtain that. It's not just enough just to have salvation. It's not just enough to say, well, we just made it in. No, no, we want the job well done. We want to do everything that God has called us to do. As God had commissioned me, he said, tell the people to dream it, start it, finish it, complete their assignment. Leave no work left undone. When you don't finish it, that's work left undone. And you've been birthed here, you've been called here with a purpose. As a child, when you was born, you was clenching something in your hand. And God wants you to release that thing that you have. Yep, you're here for not everyone, but you're here for someone. Someone's here right now who's listening to me. You are the part pre, you are the one that God has called to elevate the family. You're the one that God has selected to make the difference in your family. You're the one that God has selected to bring the change, that things won't remain the same because you're noticing patterns, you're noticing cycles, you're noticing stagnation, you're noticing these things are not moving. And God says, I want you to be the one to be the one to answer. No, Jesus finished his work and he rose up with all power and he's given power unto us, giving power unto you to do something about the situation. So tonight I want to talk about breaking boundaries and retrieving territory. Get back everything that God has for you. And let's go to the foundation scripture. If you got your Bibles, if you got your phones, um, numbers. Chapter 13. Um, let's just set this up. We're not going to read all this, but understand this. There was a assignment sent for the spies that spied the land. That the Lord God had already promised them this land. But when they sent out these spies, these 12 spies came back and 10 gave a bad report. The report was, yes, Lord, to Moses, yes, it's fruitful. Yes, it's plentiful. Yes, it has everything that God says, but there's an enemy in the land. There's an enemy on the property um, that they're larger than us. They, their statue is bigger than us. And we're not going to be able to overtake them. Listen to what Caleb says in verse 30. Numbers 13, verse 30. He's saying, Caleb still the people. They was in an uproar. But Caleb still the people before Moses said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Uh, verse 31, but the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against these people for they are stronger than we. 32, then they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land though we have gone to search is the land that eats up the inhabitants. Therefore, all the people that we saw in are men of great statue and they are and they we are saw giants, the sons of Anakin. We come up against these giants. We are in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we are in their sight. They're saying that though the Lord had already said, now listen, the instruction was go search out the land and tell us what you see. These preachers, these ministers, these prophets are coming back and prophesying. And, and, and telling people that, yes, the land is good, but we can't take it. But God had already given them the land. Be mindful of the people that you surround yourself with in this season. Be mindful of the people that you, that you, what you call in your day ones. Be careful of the people that you say are your, in your inner circle. Uh, one of my mentors says he doesn't have a circle. He likes to put everybody in a straight line so he can see everybody at the same time. I want to say this to someone in this season to break the boundaries that's been holding you up. Make sure you got people who are going to hold you up. Make sure you got people who have your back. Make sure you have people who are not sitting there trying to set you up for failure. Um, you want someone like Caleb. You want someone like Joshua who says we are well 
able. I need people who are in my circle and in my in my facility who says that we are able to do this. Time out for just, I don't think so, I don't believe so, but we want to talk about that we have faith that can move mountains. We want to read these scriptures and we want to say this, and my God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask and think. But then you've got people who are putting the wrong seed in your ear. You got people who are speaking unto you that this is not your year. You got people saying, why you can continue worrying about that silly dream? Why are you sitting there, sitting there trying to continue to follow these people and you talking about healing, deliverance, and you still not healed yourself? Be careful of the people you have in your circle. Um, one thing you have to do to break these boundaries is watch the people who you have surrounded you. You have to watch the people who are supposed to have your back. You have to make sure that the people who are with you. See, let me show you something. God showed this to me. He said, people may not be against you, but are they, are they with you? I mean, you can have people who say, well, you know, I, I have no, no ill will. I don't wish nothing wrong with you, but that's not the person who, when the times get tough, when things get against the wall that says, listen, we're going to move forward. We're going to go forward. We're going to conquer. See, I don't need nobody telling me uh, or trying to sabotage me in this season who doesn't have the same mindset, who wants to move forth and, pro and progress forward and grow in the things of God and grow in the things of of, of business, growing the things what God has called you into. If you're going to complete your assignment, make sure you got the right people surrounding you. Um, as Caleb said, he said, be still before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome. Uh, I need some people who are saying that I want to be surrounded with people who say we are well able, that we're more than conquerors, that we can overcome the circumstance, the situation that as we say is God for us, who could be against us? Because God said the land was already theirs. And I'm saying to someone right now, God is saying that property is already yours. God is already saying that business is already yours. God has already said that ministry that you've been seeing, that you know that you want to go forth. You want to go and build this and start this. God says, go forth. You're well able because God is for you. God has already given you the instructions. God has already justified you. Some of us are waiting for justification from people who don't have nothing to do with the thing that we are trying to do. Um, you're waiting for this person to, to validate you. But I'm saying to Swan tonight that you have already been validated. You have already been justified. He, You have always been glorified. Why? Because Lord has glorified you. God has chosen you. God I has selected you to do work in this season. You were created for workmanship. You've been created more than just to go to a J-O-B, but you've been sent here with an assignment from the Most High God. Um, yes, once again, you might not be sent to everyone, but there is something particular that you know that God is calling you into. So they brought up this evil report, and the evil report brought that boundary upon them. That the thing that they were supposed to have and possess got delayed. Have you been in that place when you know that something that God has said is rightfully yours? But it just seems like things are being delayed. You know that God has said that the healing was yours, uh, that that the righteous are not forsaken, no children better for bread, and you feel like I'm just barely making it. Um, that these boundaries. Uh, that's been surrounding you, surrounding your family, surrounding the ministry. And you see these things continue going on, these cycles still coming on. God wants to break those things today. Uh, one thing I want to, another thing I want to share with you, as listen to the report of what they were saying. Um, one was claiming it that they was going to receive it. That it was already theirs. And the other ones were talking about what they saw. Um, they were speaking doubt. They were speaking negative. They were speaking fear. False evidence appearing real. And one part, they, they're saying that when we're seeing these people, we look like grasshoppers. How, how You're not up on these people. You don't see them. They, you're not right before they face. You're looking far away. So it was false evidence they was giving. Watch out for false evidence. That someone's telling you that you can't do it when God has already said that you can do it. 
Watch out for people who are trying to look at their perception. Um, let me share. Lord said this to me years ago. He says, um, they don't have your vision because they don't have your sight. Um, they don't see the things that the way you see it. So they're not going to get it. They're not going to get why you want to step out and why you want to move to a different place. They don't understand why God is calling you into a different type of church with different type of people. Because God is saying that it's time for you to elevate out of the ordinary in order to go and step into the extraordinary. Um, that you have to leave out of the land of familiar. Uh, see, one of the problem was uh, the children, the Hebrew children, when they was brought out of Egypt, they still had the Egyptian mindset. They still had the slave mindset. They still seen themselves as small, even though they served this great big God who was doing great big things in their life, who opened and parted the Red Sea, who had water coming out of a rock that that gave water unto millions of people, that they had quail coming out the water. They had a pillar of fire at night and a cloud by day. And you think that you can't go and overtake these different giants, as they said, the Anakis, the inhabitants of this land. God says right now someone's in your land. Someone's in your property. Someone's in your house. Someone's in the car that you're supposed to be having. But you have allowed yourself to be trapped by the mindset of your yesterday and your last year and your 10 years ago. You've been set up in a trap and you have the old Egyptian mindset. But God says, I need to bring you out of that mindset in order for you to possess the land that's rightfully yours. I want you to say that it's already mine and I'm going to claim it. You break the boundaries by receiving it already. That you said it's already mine because God said it. It's not what the man of God, what I'm saying. What did God say to you already? What was the promise that God said to you? That boundary, that invisible fence in that mind. The mind is plaguing you. The mind is trying to tell you that you can't have it. That you won't have it. That your father didn't have it. That your mother didn't have it. And look at the circumstances around you. I declare and decree that that's not your portion. But this season, the boundaries are coming down. And you're taking back the territory that's rightfully yours. Why is it rightfully yours? Because God said it was yours. And all you have to do is scope it out. I want somebody to have a mindset uh, this year to go look at properties. I want someone to have a mindset to go look at the car that you want to drive. I want someone to have the mindset to go and look at different office buildings and see yourself, envision yourself, imagine yourself in that thing already. Um, go ahead and just take the test drive on your dream car. Go ahead and, and set up a real estate agent and go to a house. That, no, no, I don't have the money, but guess what? My father has given me a promise. Listen, the God that we serve, the one who created the heavens, the earth, the stars, the moons, the galaxies, the craters, the comets, and everything else. Uh, we think too small, people of God. We think in this little, tiny, ant mentality mindset. And God says, the land is already yours. But the boundary of your mind has you complacent. The boundary in your mind is saying that you can't receive it. That you can't do it. Because your father didn't do it. And your father's father didn't do it. But God is calling someone in this season saying, this is the reason I chose you. For you to break down the boundary. So I need you to have a new mindset that I'm going to go take back the territory that's rightfully yours. Do you understand that the promises that your father, your mother is supposed to have, and God bless them if they're not here any longer, that promise is still sitting in the spirit realm and is waiting for someone to claim it. Your great-grandma, your great-grandfather, they were supposed to do something, but maybe they started the business and things have went down. These things that are still laying in the spirit because guess what? God's word does not come back void and the and what is waiting for is someone to say i'm going to take it is waiting for the candle to say let's go up at once 
And for we're well able to overcome it. You're going to overcome that anxiety. You're going to overcome the depression. You're going to overcome the barrenness. You're going to overcome the stagnation. You're going to overcome the procrastination. You're going to overcome these things that has been plaguing in your life for so long. The boundaries are going to be torn down and you're going to go and possess the territory. It is yours to have. Why? Because God has already sealed your bloodline in the name. The Bible says in the Bible the plans, if you be a seed of Abraham, then are you heirs to the promise. Therefore, that curse that was upon your family no longer has jurisdiction in your life. Mm -mm. The curse that was cursing, the thing that was hindering, the thing that was restricting, that, that boundary that the enemy was not allowing you to only go but so far, no longer has any place in you right now. No, you say, you said, you don't have a place in me. Sickness doesn't have a place in me. Poverty doesn't have a place in me. Why? Because I belong to the God Almighty. I am a son. I am a daughter. I am an heir of the promise. I am a royal priesthood. Uh, Caleb knew his identity. Joshua knew his identity. Through who? Through Christ. Through the Almighty God. They seen this miracle, signs and wonders. And God is about to make someone a sign. Somebody's going to say, who is this person that is doing these things? This is not the family. Family I remember. This is not the man I remember. This is not the woman I remember. God's about to make you a sign and you're going to lead and direct because you're going to show them how to get out of the barrier. You're going to show them how to get out of the boundaries. You're going to show them how to get the territory because God has placed that ability in you. Uh, the kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent take it back by force. Um, see, Caleb had that mind said that no, no, this land belongs to us. Joshua had this mind said that this land belongs to us. And I need someone to get that mindset tonight that this belongs to me. Uh, like I said before, uh, different people did not attain the promise in your family and they were supposed to. I don't want the awakening to be because someone else had to pass before you to wake up. I want you to wake up now and say, no, no uncles have passes and aunties have passes and cousins left before they were supposed to leave. But I'm not going to leave here until I get everything that God has said for me to have and do everything that God has told me to do. I want you to say that these boundaries are going to be tore down tonight. Um, it's because it's not by my might or our might, but it's by the power of the almighty God. It's not by the strength of and my own intellect, but God has given you the intellect and wisdom. And God says, anyone who lacks wisdom, let him ask for it. He gives it free. So the question you say, Lord, why am I still here? Why am I not going to possess what you said? Why is this thing still stagnant in my life? Ask the questions to the almighty God and he will give you the answers. And once he gives you the answers, you know exactly what to do. Um, the fervent prayer of the righteous of Elon Musk. So I want you to understand one another way these boundaries are going to come down. One, you're getting out of that old Egyptian mindset. Two, you're making sure that you're speaking the correct words. You don't speak doom and gloom, but you speak life. The Bible says, choose life and choose death. But he says, choose life. He says, death and life are in the power of tongue. So what you speak and declare and decree. No, don't get caught up in people say, well, you want them naming and claim it. But that's, I'm... Do as my father does. Jesus said, what sort of thing you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive and you should have it. I'm just being like my daddy. My daddy said, let there be and it was. And guess what? You have to have that same mindset. I'm going to call those things. No, nope, I've been called. I don't, I don't care what didn't happen for the next man or what didn't happen for the next one. But I'm having the rhema word that when God drops in your spirit in this season, that you speak the word with boldness. You say, no, devil, you will take your hands off my children. You will take your hands off my wife. You will take your hands off of my health. I declare and declare that I am whole. I'm healed. I'm delivered. No, nope, that property belongs to me. Why? Because God showed it to me. As I said, God said, dream it, start it, finish it. If the property is yours, it don't matter what the bank says. It don't matter what your bank account says. I'm talking to the one who says, the Lord says, I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think. Get your small, stinking thinking out the way and say, Lord, I'm going to possess the best. Uh, it's, not, it's not just 
for me to show off. No, no. I know who I am. If I'm saying that the Lord is my God, if I'm saying that my father is the king of kings, why won't you just, why would you merely want to just get by? Um, no, no. Time out for this getting by. No, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Um, the blessing of Abraham will come on you. And why did God select and to tell us how blessed Abraham was? Why did God tell Moses, hey, if you listen to my commandments, tell them they're going to be blessed in the city. Tell them they're going to be blessed in the field. Tell them they're going to be blessed coming. Tell them they're going to be blessed going. Tell them I'm going to bless their storehouse. Tell them I'm giving them the nation. Why is he telling them this? And guess what? We have a better covenant based upon better promises through the Lord Jesus Christ. That, yep, I was once outside looking in. But when I accepted Jesus, I've been adopted into the family. And I have every legal ground. I have every legal right. I have every legal promise that was said to Abraham. It, it applies to me right now. And all what Caleb was doing is saying, I know what the promises of Lord is. I've seen the goodness of the Lord. And I want to attain it. And that's why Caleb and Joshua, even at the age of 80, went and possessed the land and received everything that was rightfully for theirs and they say they even had enough strength at the age of 80 let me say to someone don't think because your age that you didn't miss some time that god can get you back in line don't think god is a master of reconciliation and redeeming and restoring the time don't get caught up if you had 20 years past five years past 40 60 years past no god in a moment of time could put you right back in line but the question is do you you believe you have to have that belief system that the boundaries that's been set against me that the walls that's been set against me just as Jericho and Joshua's got instructions and said walk around these walls seven times and on that next day that seventh day they was told and gave a word to say I want you to shout and as they shout that wall came down I speak to every boundary every limitation is about to come down you're going to speak into that mountain and say, be picked up and cast in the sea. Whatever the mountain is, whatever the boundary is, whatever that thing that is blocking you from possessing was rightfully yours, you got to claim it, name it, claim it, and receive it. And then you move forward. See, what Caleb was, what Caleb was saying, he said, let us go up before we can overcome it. Let us go up at once. Um, some of us have been limited because we have been stagnant. And when God gave us the instructions, we didn't move. And delayed disobedience is still disobedience. But God gives the instructions in this season. Because I'm speaking to someone, your redemption is coming. Reconciliation is coming. Restoring is coming. When God gives you the signal to go don't you hold on. Don't you sit there and be stagnant. Don't you sit there and procrastinate. But I want you to go forth and move forth in the thing that God told you to do. I want you to be relentless. I want you to be just like Caleb and Joshua and said, we're well able. And we're going to go and take this. But we don't have all the finances. God never told us to pay for it. God said, pray and believe. And then as you move forward. As you go for God will open the door. This is a supernatural time and season. You got to understand this season and time. Everything is going up. Gas is going up. Rent is going up. Apartments going up. And if you're looking at how you're going to do it in the natural, you'll still be sitting there in the natural. But God is calling for someone to get into the spirit realm. To say, God, I'm coming into you. You say, come to the bowl. You say, come boldly to the bo to to the throne of grace. And as I come into this room, as I go into my secret place, as I go and I make my request, He's going to download. I'm speaking to someone. You're going to receive downloads, instructions. The wisdom of God is greater than the wisdom of man. We're not talking about just a textbook knowledge. We're talking about the one who created the thing called knowledge, the thing that's called wisdom. We're talking about the God who was in the beginning, who's in His. Uh, we sit in the circumference of who he is we're talking about the god who created everything so when, when don't put no limitations and say i don't know any longer say lord i have your perfect will 
I know exactly what to do. Thank you for downloading the information and instructions. Thank you that my ears are clear, that my eyes are seeing exactly what you want me to do. I'm moving into position. I'm moving into place. Lord, you said that you wanted me to have this house. Lord, thank you for the instructions and direction what you need me to do. God's going to bring the right people around you. God's going to favor. This is not just a prosperity thing. This is not just, this is a, a kingdom ship thing that you are a royal priest or that you are an ambassador. Get out of the mindset of the mind of, of the, how the world thinks. The enemy is giving the, it, all the goods and goals to his people. You think God doesn't want to bless us? You think God don't want us to have the best? You think God wants his people sick disease, impoverished? Why, why would you think that he says in his word, he said, I'm being a good father. He said, if you asking me for a stone, ask me for bread, I'm not giving you a stone. If you ask me for an egg, I'm not giving you a serpent. Uh, but the, but while you were sleeping, an enemy came in and put some tears in your mind. And, and you, you remember the times that things didn't work out. And then, then, then you kind of turned your back away from the things of God. And God's looking for those who say, I'm going to turn back unto you. Lord, I trust you. You are my father. You are my creator. You are my maker. And I know there's no good thing that you're holding from me. Why? Because your word says so. No good thing is God holding from you. So if he's not holding from you, that means you need to go and take it. Um, no, it's going to be a battle. Um, there's no territory that was not taken back that belonged to the children of Israel. Um, that belong um, to the property of, uh, of the kings when they didn't have to battle and fight for it. Um, this season, this time, um, to get, to take, to break down the barriers, the boundaries, and take your territory. You're going to have to get under the attack. Um, not, not being so defensive minded, but I need the offensive people to say, I'm ready to go forth. Uh, as Caleb said, we got to move forward now. No, we, we, we've sat here long enough. We've been around this mountain long enough. We've been in this circumstance long enough. We've been in these bills long enough. We've been with these tears long enough. We've been in these fights and arguments long enough. And God says, take these boundaries down. But you got to fight. Um, you got to get the fighting mentality. You got to have, I'm a conquering mentality. You got to go and say, I'm going to take back what's rightfully mine because it belongs to me. The boundaries have to come down and the territory has to be taken back. What is the territory that you're looking for? Is it in your finances? Is it in your health? Is it in your marriage? Is it with your children? Whatever that territory is, I want you to have in your mindset that I'm going to take this back. As we break down these barriers tonight, I want you to understand that you better go and get that territory. Write out what's your territory. It could be, like I said, your financial freedom. It could be the peace of your mind. The enemy says trapped you in your mind and you've been sitting in the same place long enough. But tonight we're going to receive, we're going to name it, we're going to claim it, and we're going to receive it. Everything that belongs to us. Amen. I'm going to share one more scripture before we go and pray. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys for sharing. Thank you guys uh, for the hearts. Um, the prayer of Jabez, 1 Chronicles, um, verse 10. Jabez, his name means he was brought into sorrow. His mom had a, a hard birth with him. And most of the times, you know, different cultures, this situation dictates uh, what the name of the child was. Like, if you know some people, if they were born on a Friday, they'll get that name. Um, so his name meant sorrow. Jabez meant sorrowful because he was born in sorrowful. But this is what he said. Um, because I'm saying to someone, don't let your name define you. Don't let that circumstance define who you are. Don't let the thing that happened years ago define you. God wants to refine you. And he wants to take you to a place where you're supposed to have. Amen. Don't let that name refine you, define you, who you are. Uh, don't let what they used to call you define you. Um, first, first Chronicles chapter 4, 10 says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou will bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and thou wilt keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. 
and God granted him that which he requested. I, I, he said, enlarge my coast. You are a big fish in a small pond, and God wants you to expand. But you need to request that expansion. Uh, you need to say, Lord, enlarge my territory, enlarge uh, where I am. Some of us been in apartments too long. Some of us been renting too long. Some of us been that same job too long. Some of us have uh, been in that same place. And God's saying tonight, ask him to enlarge your territory. Enlarge the capacity of your mind to see bigger, to want more. Um, that you will leave a legacy. Um, that they said this woman of God, this man of God, uh, truly God favored them. It's time to attain the favor. Look, God is not a respected person, but he needs someone who has the mindset to open their mouth. As Jabez said, he says, no, my name is not going to define me. Don't let, don't, don't let your name, don't let that situation, don't let that thing in, in that happened to you define who God has called you to be. Um, you are the apple of his eyes. You are beautiful. You're wonderfully made. Um, that tonight that God wants to give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That sorrow no longer has your name connected to it. That fear no longer has your name connected to it. That the limitations that's been on you no longer has your name on it. But as Jabez did, he prayed unto the Lord saying, Bless me indeed. I need someone to say, Lord, bless me indeed. I need some bless me, Lord. Bless, bless me, Lord. Uh, don't be scared to come to the Father boldly and say, Lord, bless me. Yes, we know we are blessed, but God's looking for someone to make confessions out their mouth. Lord, bless me. Bless me. Bless my home. Bless my hands. Bless, bless my mouth. What I speak. Bless what I put my hands to. Enlarge my territory, Lord God. I'll come, I want to come and claim everything that you have for me. Everything that my parents didn't receive. Everything uh, that my great-grandparents didn't receive. Whatever it is that's supposed to be connected to us, we want to receive. We want to disconnect um, from the things that the enemy has sown. The limitations, the barriers. Um, not just only getting so far that invisible fence. You ever seen that invisible fence with the dog? The dog's trying to go. It, it, it may come, there's no fence blocking, but there's a collar on them that's keeping them. And it sends out electric shock. And some of us have that same type of mindset. Where every time we try to move forth, we're getting shot. We're getting pushed back. God don't want you no longer to be in that invisible fence, but that barrier, that boundary, that mountain, that thing that has got you complacent, got you in that same cycle needs to come down. The, the barrier, boundaries. Worrying could be a boundary. Unforgiveness can be a boundary. Not being being fruitful in your womb. Boundary, all these boundaries, but God says take back the territory. As we take these boundaries down, you go and claim and receive everything that's rightfully yours. Jesus has already made the enemy an open shame. You have that name that's above all names. They utilize that name. Call forth of the Lord our God, God, the Almighty One, the Great I Am, and say, Lord, tonight, bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast, and thy hands might be with me. Lord, be with me in everything I'm doing. Keep me from the evil one. Some of us keep falling in wickedness and evilness. Some of us keep falling in the same patterns and the wrong people are coming around us and the and, and wrong relationships and, and not moving in our life. God wants to break down those boundaries. That 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 Mr. Right comes, not Mr. Right now. That Mrs. Right come. The one who's been predestined for you. Um, as woman of God, that you are the helper to that man, and man of God, that you are the you are that rock, you are that priest of the house, and even if right now you're in the relationship and you're in the marriage, and God says I can make all things well, and you call what you want, not what you've been seeing, as Jabez did. Ah, great. And 
he said, and God, and God said, God granted him that which he requested. And God granted him that which he requested. I want you to say that God's going to grant me that which I requested. Hallelujah. God's going to grant that which you request. Because it's going to line up with his purpose. It's lining up with his will. It's lining up with the promise that he said. You know the territory that God has said is rightfully yours. If it's healing, you receive it. He says, beloved, I wish you would prosper and be in good health just as your soul shall prosper. If the barriers in your soul is going to come out. If the barriers in the mind, bipolarness, depression. Listen, I don't even want you claiming allergies. That's not your portion. It's allergy season, we know. Okay. But Lord says, He was bruised for our nakedness. Chastised and peace was upon him. And through his stripes, we were healed. Don't, mm, how I say this? Don't compromise even when it comes to allergies. Don't compromise even when it comes to different various things. Well, this this thing is in our bloodline. This is no. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Don't compromise with anything. You stick to what God says. Man of God, the symptoms is there. Believe me, I understand the symptoms is there, but the words trumps whatever symptoms they are. And as you persevere and you stay with the word, you start with it, you finish with it. God's bringing deliverance to someone tonight. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father, I thank you tonight for those who have joined me. I thank you for those who are connecting right now. I thank you for those, Lord God, who are under the sound of my voice. We're coming boldly unto you that said these boundaries, Lord God, that had us trapped, snared, and not moving forth. Tonight they come down. We speak to the boundaries of the mind, Lord God, that leaves us complacent, that leaves us fearful, that leaves us with doubt and worry. Lord God, that is not our portion for you said you have given us peace. You said you would give us love. You have given us joy. Lord God, I speak unto the mind right now that the mind be lined up with the power of God, that everything that's been driving their mind while that they have not been at ease, that they couldn't sleep, that they always were. And Father, we take that worry away right now and we cast it upon you father you said anything that is upon us that we should cast it unto you lord god we speak into the mind that rest the rest be upon their minds right now father in the mighty name of jesus i speak rest to the boundary of the mind that's keeping their mind complacent that they can't think and they can't dream and they can't have that which you've called them to be lord god i speak against the heart of their mind, Lord God, the words that were spoken, the situations, the heartaches, the pains, Lord God, everything mm, we come against, Lord God, the hindrance of their mind. We come against the trauma that happened. That, Lord God, they can't seem to let it go, but, Lord God, that boundary of the mind, that heartache, that pain, that situation in their life, Lord God, that root right now, I speak against it, that it be uprooted. Father, I speak right now that in this season, this time, they have clarity. Um, they see exactly where they go, what they need to do, and how they need to do it. That boundary of the mind is coming out. Lord, I thank you right now. That you're bringing peace into that situation. That someone right now, boundaries has been in their house, and that they cannot move forward because the their their spouse and themselves are not on the same accord. I speak togetherness right now. I speak that Lord God that they will come and fellowship one with each other. That Lord God they will have the mindset uh, to trust in you, to lean into you, Father. Um, the boundary of the mind, the boundary in their house, Lord God, whether it be from children.